who's ready to learn some Australian geography? Well, I am, and I hope you are. Like and subscribe. Let's get into it. South Australia has been the site of many large and extraordinary events. From the massive Ackerman Impact event that we've already covered in a past episode, link to that in the description, to hosting one of the only known instances of a Falsic Shield volcano to exist on our planet. It hosts incredibly vast mineral deposits, especially in the area known as Olympic Dam, and it has this event to thank for that. It's safe to say all is certainly not how it seems to the naked eye in this part of the world. I was always under the impression that Australia was very, not necessarily very active in terms of the geography. I thought it was quite a stable continent. Now, we also learnt slightly uh, a while ago about how um, the, the plates of an, and a moving New Zealand, but as a whole, I always thought a flat and obviously I, don't, I know that it's not necessarily flat anymore but it was quite a stable continent how true is that but it has just talked about volcanoes so in this episode we're going to take a look at the Gawler Ranges in South Australia and discuss how this unique circumstance occurred to begin with that cannot be Australia welcome to Oz Geographics Felsic volcanoes aren't known for producing lava fields but at Gawler Ranges, the lava field produced here was one that released an astonishing amount of rhyolitic and dacitic lava over a period of about 1 to 2 million years. This is the equivalent to a blink of an eye in terms of geological time. Rhyolite is an incredibly silica-saturated rock, and when it's in its magmatic state, this high level of silica, coupled with the normally lower temperature that falsic magma is known to exist in, serves to thicken the viscosity level of the lava, to the point it's rendered almost static. Wow. The fact that Gawler Ranges was able to produce a lava field that was not only deep, with some places buried beneath a depth of 300 metres worth of lava, but it also spread out very far, much farther than one would expect falsic lava to travel. But this also happened 1.6 billion years ago. The Earth was much younger back then, life was almost non-existent. The Earth more or less resembled a wasteland with no vegetation, only rocks, wind, rain, and eruptions. I love the way he put that, that it's talking about this, this volcanic um, eruption and lava flow that lasted, what, over a million years. But how he how he says that's just a blink of an eye in terms of you know the geography of the of the the Earth, and it's so true. You know, if you think the Earth is billions of years old, well, a million is nothing. It is no time at all. And and it's and it's to think of how long humans have been on the planet. You know, it is it's not even a grain of of rice. It's not even a grain of salt. Uh, it's nothing. Our time here is is meaningless. And I think. When you see and hear about these sort of situations that were millions of years, it lasted millions of years, it puts things into perspective. It really, really does. Because of this younger age, many characteristics that we know today were altered back then. And this is one of the many theories that are used to explain the abnormally high temperature that the magma at the Gawler Ranges was seen to exist at with it being between two to 300 degrees Celsius higher than the falsic magma of today. Along with this, though, was an oddity in the chemical composition of the magma, with it containing very high halogen levels that further served to thin out the viscosity of the magma. Approximately 30,000 kilometers cubed of rhyolitic and dacitic lava were rapidly extruded and their eroded remnants preserve one of the most voluminous falsic magmatic events on Earth. In Australia, many of us are familiar with this landform derived from basaltic eruptions, often referred to as organ pipes because of the way they look. They are the result of large basaltic lava flows, which solidified, cooled, and cracked into these large hexagonal columns. Wow, if you're in Australia, do you know about these? Have you been here? Please let me know in the comments. Um, that is, wow, what a sight. And it's just like very sharp, isn't it? It's very sharp. 
um, directions and things. And that makes you think because you see this. Now, the way he's saying is it's sort of cracked into those shapes. When you normally see things like that, it's where the tectonic plates have come together and it's going up and you've got different layers and different, quite often different types of, of soil and, and whatnot. Um, but this is all the same. Surely it didn't just crack like that. So, ba but basically that was lava that, uh, just amazing, uh, fascinating stuff. It's quite rare to find falsic versions of this for the aforementioned reason that normally falsic lava doesn't really flow. But in Agola Ranges, we have massive columnar jointing occurring, creating a spectacular and rare sight to witness. But how did this all start? Well, I'm glad you asked. After studying supervolcanoes for many years, I can say with confidence that the precursor to this event was a bad one, like really, really bad. Normally, in order for a supervolcanic complex to release lava flows, a massive eruption must first occur. This is so the batholith-sized magma chamber that exists deep beneath the Earth can degas to the point that this magma is able to be released to the surface in a non-explosive state, referred to as an effusive lava flow. Effusive lava flows are very much like those witnessed in Hawaii, a more gentler creeping kind, with very little to no explosivity associated with the eruption. Because isn't isn't volcan volcanic eruptions about the gas that builds up and it's boiling, 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 more and more gas, more and more gas. And then it's it's almost like when you put Mentos, isn't it? Mentos in a Coke bottle and shake it up. And then all that build up of gas and then it goes. But this is a lot calmer. As previously mentioned, this eruption is associated with the vast mineral wealth that we see in South Australia. The Olympic Dam Mine is a large polymetallic underground mine located in South Australia. It is the fourth largest copper deposit and the largest known single deposit of uranium in the world. Copper is the largest contributor to total revenue, accounting for approximately 70% of the mine's income, with the remaining 25% from uranium and around 5% from silver and gold. And we have this supervolcanic eruption and the associated lava flows to thank for that. So this is the story of one of the most unique and remarkable landforms to grace the beautiful country of Australia, a literal falsic shield volcano, something that we only really see basalt or basalt and andesite in, and something that we will never really see again on Earth. Thanks for watching. Fascinating, absolutely crazy. And like I said, you always think of Australia as being quite a stable place in terms of the geography, not the weather. The weather is mental, um, but the actual physical, um, the landscape, you know, it's seen as being a fairly consistent, steady continent to be on. But it wasn't necessarily always the case by the sounds of it. But to have that volcano, I this is the first I've seen pretty sure those um those shapes um almost the tubular the tubular shapes that incredible to be able to see that well australia has had its crazy past right with with volcanoes I, it's news to me it really is news to be um to me fascinating as I said, if you have been to some of these locations, please let me know. If you've got any pictures, maybe that would be awesome. But thank you so much. We keep on learning together. Make sure you hit that like button and you subscribe. This is what helps the channel. So please do that. And I will catch you next time.